This meets that. This meets that. You pick this and I'll pick that. We'll put them together and what do you get? A movie we describe as This Meets That. This Meets That. Yeah! Welcome to This Meets That. It's a podcast where we take two movies, mash them together, create a third new movie that would be described as This Meets That. My name's Ben. And I'm Steve. How's it going, Steve? Doing well, Ben. Excited to create some movie magic with you. It's always our f- most fun thing to do. Uh, kind of a week week to to talk about new releases. I did my due diligence and saw them all, but Steve, as always, doesn't have the time. So, when it's a week week, you do with this meets that. So, Steve, do you have your first movie? I do. Uh, me too. One, two, three. Don Real John. Steel. Oh. Okay, I've never seen Don John. Okay. But I know uh, he's... Um, he's kind I've of never a, seen Real Steel. A, okay, he's a clean freak. And... Or he's like... He's, he has like seven specific things that he cares about like keeping his place clean keeping his car nice family fucking hair you know it's something like that right sure he has like these tenets like of himself that was like the trailer but that's very little to do with okay that. but then he meets someone uh scarlett johansson yeah he's a he's a ladies man he likes meeting women and you know uh, hooking up with them, but doesn't really like. He's not a relationship guy. He's mm-hmm. like, ah, it's not for me. You know, I'm too cool. Uh, but then he meets the most beautiful woman on the planet, and then it's like, okay, I could see something serious happening. But here. doesn't she kind of suck too? Uh, she's just very um, like superficial, high high maintenance kind uh, of okay. in terms of just like, oh, we have to be this way, and if we're together, we're gonna do this thing. And she, like, doesn't let him have sex until like he's like kind of earned it. Okay. Um. And uh, I know I saw one clip of him talking about like I like to clean, I like to keep my place clean. She's like, oh well, you ain't doing that when we're together. We'll just have the maid do it. I'm like, no, I'll do it myself. Like, what do you use to mop your floor? And she's like, I don't mop my floor, and it like blows his fucking mind. Um, I don't it's been know. Been I've seen it, so I don't necessarily remember. That, but, <laughs> but yeah, he uh, as beautiful as she is, uh, just they kind of kind of. Like counterbalance each other in mm-hmm. a, a negative way. Yeah, not necessarily she tests his patience. Yeah, and, and he's he addicted to hers. porn, right? And she thinks that's disgusting because she's a big movie fan, right? Uh, yeah, she she loves movies. Have and I she, seen this movie? You, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Uh, you know, she's into the romance of it. He's because he's not a romance guy. He's mm-hmm. gotten all of his like romance from porn. Yeah, uh, that's sort of the big uh, thing of the movie is he's might be a slight porn addict uh but she thinks it's disgusting so he has to hide his addiction from her and, and hilarity ensues he directed this or he wrote it he wrote and directed and started it is yeah. this his first directorial debut i believe feature length feature least? length anyway yeah uh okay. i don't think he's done anything since this huh. okay uh, yeah, no, the only thing... like i said feature length the only thing I've seen of Joseph Gordon Levitt in a long time is just his hair's all grown out, and he's on these TikToks just like ranting and raving about politics, and he's like pulling his hair out because he's very, very anti-Trump, and he's just goes on these huge rants and like, what was the last movie I've seen this dude in? Was it The Dark Knight Rises? Like, what the hell? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen any of that, but he's in the new movie Killer Heat with Shailene Woodley, where Killer he's like a detective. Heat. Hmm. Okay. Nope. I don't think it looks very good, but okay. it just the trailer dropped recently. Real Steel is about Hugh Jackman, kind of a scumbag loser. Uh, he doesn't want anything to do with his kid, and the baby mama's parents are like dumping the kid on him and going to give him a bunch of money because I guess they're going on vacation or something. I can't quite remember exactly why, but he's dumped with this kid, and he's broke, and he used to be a former boxer and now is, you know, you know, the typical he's living in a trailer and sure, just sure, kind, sure. kind of a beautiful loser, you know, can't get his life together, even though he's Hugh fucking Jackman. Uh, so then they find like a um, a sparring dummy in mm-hmm. the dumps. And these things are kind of built to take a lot of damage because in this world, boxing isn't really a thing. People's bloodlust got too high so they moved to robots and then oh you can watch robots rip each other apart and so they rebuild this dummy robot named adam i want to say 
and they start moving their way up up the ranks and then bond as father and son and as you know trainer and robot <laughs> and then you know also wackiness ensues don john real steel i mean i think the initial thought is like we're going like Fuckbot, right? Robot. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What were you going to say? I didn't really have a thing. Okay. That's a good, good place to start. Do you know there's a Megan Fox fuck robot movie that just came out? Her? No. It's, <laughs> it's uh, basically what it was. Uh, I think it was like off the, the popularity of Megan. Well, let's take a real life Megan, turn her into a robot, and she's a sex robot. Well, I don't think she's a sex robot. I think she's the housekeeper robot. Like, the dude's wife is in the hospital. It's like, oh, I need a robot to take care of the kid. And then it's this gorgeous looking robot. Um, and then I think it falls in love with him and goes crazy. I don't know. I didn't watch the whole trailer. It looked really bad. But once it's free, I'm totally watching it. And it's starring Scarlett Johansson? No, it's star starring Megan Fox. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Sorry, I missed that part. In, anywho. Anywho. Okay, so... Uh, is so, he obsessed with sleeping with robots because he doesn't know how to connect with humans? Or he's really bad in bed, so he only sleeps with robots, so he's not embarrassed. But then yeah. when he finds the girl of his dreams, can he do it? Or does he blow it, you know, and he's <laughs> coming in his pants, you know? <laughs> is it like a silly comedy where he has to make friends with this robot and the robot kind of like takes him through the steps of how to be with a woman, but then the robot falls for him. Like it's the, the, the girl next door, best friend that you've never seen mm -hmm. as, as an option, but she, the robot starts falling for the guy all through all these, you know, tests, but he just sees her as a machine until he, after he starts dating the human and realizes, Oh, maybe the one that got away is the one I wanted the whole time. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the next thing. You got it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, yeah, do we go the... Uh, let's just stick with the sex robot okay. portion of it. Let's let's go with that for right now. Um, now, do we make the person who has the sex robot the confident, cool guy and who's just like, you know, yeah, I sleep with this thing and it gives me... Maybe it gives me confidence. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I don't even need this thing. It's just, it, it you know, it's a it's a sex toy. Mm -hmm. um, and then, ooh, no. Okay. Light, oh, lightning strike. All right. So, yeah, he has this sex toy. It can talk. They have banter or whatever. Maybe it, it's an older model. It has some pre functions. Like, it's not necessarily, it maybe has some human features, but, you know, it, you can tell it's a robot. Yeah. It's not, it's more for pleasure than yeah, accuracy. It's got like a, a screen for a face yeah, instead yeah. of actual lifelike features, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, and then he meets a girl. They fall in love. He's like, wow, this, you know, this really is the bet. But, you know, he has a connection to the robot or whatever. But then here's the thing. At the end, you find out that real girl has been a robot the this whole, time. whole time. She's just like a really yeah, good model. And maybe it just like destroys his confidence or whatever mm. and then maybe it's, it's like i kind of so this was a lie it's been programmed to love me but then it's like but i do kind of love this other robot but then the robot's just like dude you you don't love maybe he loses both and maybe the two <laughs> robots <laughs> maybe those two fall in love uh yeah. i don't know because like what's what's the real story there that just i would all... think he would learn all these things from the robot start dating a real woman, she finds out that he's been practicing on robots and maybe it is a mainstream thing and people do it, but it's still one of those, you know, people look down on you. Sure. And so she either like leaves him for it or is jealous and she wants to take the robot out of the equation. Mm. You could have a thing where the original robot, you know, I'm not beautiful. I I look this way. I can never. Mm -hmm. They can't modify me enough to like. Or if you modify me, I'll lose my personality chip or it, something. And, and then I won't be the same person. Uh, but, you know, you could do like kind of a happy ending where at the end that the busted up robot or whatever uploads their consciousness into the you know the prettier one so okay. It's like, oh okay so i can have the relationship I the now best of both worlds best of both worlds yeah yeah uh because 
looks matter, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. That I think there just could be something kind of fun there. Yeah. Um, and it's and especially if you did something, you know, it, it could be connected to that or not. But a guy has a sex robot. And he has told all these people, you know, the the story of, oh, my girlfriend in Canada. Sure. Oh, she goes to a different school. Well, he gets caught up in this lie and he has to bring the sex robot to school or college. Let's say college. So we're not having underage people have uh, sleeping with robots. And the robot has to pretend to be human. And it's mm -hmm. one of those sort of silly things like, oh, here, have a drink. And, you know. Robots can't have drinks, so how does she dispose of the drink, or does she drink it in short circuit, but he has to play it off like they're dancing, you know, a stupid thing like that. Mm. And then he gets, it's prom or whatever the <laughs> fuck they have in college. College prom. <laughs> college prom, yeah, yeah. that classic college prom. And, you know, she's going to be homecoming queen or something, and he gets called out. Everyone sees that he's a, a robot fucker. And he makes that big speech of it doesn't matter where you come from and whether What's on the inside, it's, if it's blood or, <laughs> or wires. Yeah. And then uh, they all clap. And it turns out like half the people there also have robot dates and like everybody's a bunch of frauds. They all mm -hmm. thought they were hot shit. But no, all the popular people were only popular because they're they're dating the hottest people in the school and they were all robots, too. Mm. So everyone's a bunch of weird pervert losers. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's do one slightly different. OK, like flip it a little. Flip it a little. What it is there a version of this where uh, it's still like a robot competition in some way? I was thinking of that and like. How do you have a? Because I when take I was, everything out of real steel. What the movie is is it's more than just robots. robots it is fight. it is a competition thing. You can't have sex competition. I know there's animes like that where like two people square off and whoever finishes the other one, you know, wins. We're on different parts of the internet, my friend. <laughs> so it's like you can't quite do that. But what if it was a say Magic Mike? type situation who could create the sexiest robot that could do a sexy dance and make the most believable performance and mm. you gotta fool the judges or something like that like i don't know what's a sex contest that isn't just a beauty pageant or some weird anime pervert thing yeah i mean because we we could still make a nest like a robot boxing movie uh, you know Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character was fit, worked out a lot, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, we could make it that, but then how do we incorporate the relationship aspect of Don yeah. John into this? Because you kind of have that, it's not a romantic one, but you have the father-son relationship. Mm -hmm. So you just make real steel, but make it a love story. Okay. It's not really all that interesting. No. So Unless it's like, he's his main competition is the one he loves. And how do I fight my love's robot and take that away from her. Am I going to pull my punches if we both end up in the, the grand robot championship? You know? Yeah. Or like, even though your robot is the one who's doing the fighting, the, the maker is a celebrity mm. in, in this world. It's like, Oh yeah, there's, there's Johnny and Jax or whatever. And Jack's the robot. And like, Oh, the hottest duo in robot fighting or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's this like, famous handsome uh lothario or whatever and then you know yeah you have this woman come on the scene and they or maybe he wasn't doing all that well he meets her she turns out to be a real uh fantastic robot scientist or what do you whatever you call them engineers yeah uh and so they be start dating she helps him with his robot who wasn't doing like he was at the bottom of the ranks mm. and then he's building up and they're, they're both getting famous then she maybe she's really like vain like oh i'm the one kind of like doing all, like you were nothing and then i built you up yeah and uh even though that maybe they weren't right for each other she leaves builds her own robot mm. then they have to fight at the end because obviously she's talented mm -hmm. but then he finds the love in himself. 
and then is able to defeat her on his own. Or maybe he just decides to stay in this dumpy chick who's really smart, too. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, when you, if it's not just the robot, it's the robot and the controller. Right? They're two in the same. So, like you said, he's very popular, handsome. His robot is really good, and but he's also popular because he can sell it. He is the beautiful Hugh Jackman, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And that scientist that who is helping him is not very attractive. Mm -hmm. And so when she starts wanting credit for look, look at all that I'm doing for you and like, ah, babe, you're kind of an ugly chud. We can't have you on screen or like his handlers or something. Yeah. You can't have her. She's not attractive enough. We got to get a a stand in to, you know, uh, to really sell this. And like, well, if you don't love me for who I am, you don't get my machines. You know, there could be Mm -hmm. something there. I mean, there is a, part of dungeon we're not talking about where after he breaks up he meets julianne more i think at like a sex or love it's either like a sex or love um addicts meeting or oh, something. okay or maybe in a whatever and they start hooking up but their relationship isn't like a like we love each other but we're not in love with each other because mm-hmm. she's much older than him but like her kids died or something like that so she's just like full of grief so they're like we know we don't. We're never. We're not gonna like get married or fall mm-hmm. in love, but we do love each but other. We're filling and a role we're for each other. A role for each other. Like okay. I give her emotional support, and she gives me. Uh, a, we both fulfill each other's physical needs, but also give each other emotional support. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, a different kind of love story at the end in that way. Hmm. Um, yeah. But who cares about <laughs> that? We have Scott Johansson right here. Uh, all right, so is is there one of these stories you're leaning towards, or is I, there just I, too many places it's going? I think the competition's a little too much like Real Steel. Yeah, I like the the silly comedy of you know getting all your sex advice from a sex robot, falling in love with a robot or a human who ends up being a robot, yeah, or wacky school comedy, any of that sort of stuff. I think yeah. is a lot more fun. a coming of age story with sex robots. Yeah, so because I, I could see that being a movie in the near future of yeah. like look what kids are doing today or like we'll do soon sex and, and robot comedy i can see that being on the poster a coming of age story with robots and it's like yeah. as simple as that because i don't think you could probably put sex robots on on the poster yeah coming of age story with robots coming spelled yeah the, the naughty way the, yeah the naughty way <laughs> yeah oh well, there's the tagline I mean, we don't have to think of it yeah but what is it what's the title of the movie the title is um uh, loading. Yeah, I was thinking like you know, there's reality bites and it's like love bites, but B Y T E S. Oh yeah, um, that's got to be a title somewhere. Already. It's got to be, and then it's so stupid. Mm. My first relationship. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> uh, Let's see, is there anything with real steel, Don John? Something about like circuit heartbreaker. <laughs> circuit breaker is more like it's yeah. not necessarily like a robot yeah. thing. Like you know how you steal your emotions, like you, mm. yeah, uh, be prepared for something so you don't break down. You can say like hearts of steel. Yeah, yeah. That's probably a title somewhere. But... Yeah. Hard bodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It has nothing to do with this, okay. but because I'm thinking of robot stuff, I have no movie here. I just have a title and just the, the very basic premise. Depressed robot, or half robot, half human, and you call it cyborg, but like uh, <sighs> spelled that way, S-I-G-H, Borg. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Gotta got get a good one before we move on. Like... Uh, Love does not compute, or does compute. Uh, circuit, uh, gigabyte, uh, metal, wires, RAM. <laughs> RAM my hard drive. <laughs> That's the porn version of our movie. Yeah. Ooh, like hard drive, like the drive to 
like find a girlfriend, get better at something. He has this drive mm-hmm. to better himself and his sex life, his love life. And it is hard to do because he's, you know, stuck with this robot or in love with this robot. So like hard drive, not one word, two words. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Hard drive. Hard drive. I mean, it might sound more like a car action film, but you know sure. what? When it's put on the poster, they'll know what's yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. One down. And we actually talked about that one for a lot longer than we... Normally, when I'm editing these together, like, oh, shit, we only talked about eight minutes on that? This episode's like a half hour. We already got a bunch. Sweet. Okay, do you got another one? I, my three Besides movies... Cyborg, the slam dunk of... <laughs> That's... Uh, Cyborg is... is pretty good like when a depressed man goes through a major operation to give him all the things he never had he's taller he's more handsome he finds out that you know these things don't really equal happiness Mm -hmm. so even though now he's tall he's beautiful he's strong he's still not happy and then he's just this miserable guy what a fun character to watch. It's a bonus point for you, <laughs> all the listeners out there. That one's for free. It's, yep. not, a, it's not a mix. It's, it's, it's just off the dome. Uh, uh, so the three that I picked for this, like they really run the gamut of okay. uh, types of movies. So my next one is nothing like Real Steel. And I think you should do the same. Nothing like Don John. Okay, got it. All right. I, one. We'll... we'll See if it's something we've picked before. It seems like something we might have, but I don't remember. One, two, three. Starship E-T. Troopers. Okay, gotcha. So, Starship Troopers, we are uh, being attacked by faraway bugs on a distant planet. They're just hurling shit at Earth, and we're going to go take them out because it's the Earth thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, the government is a bit fascist and, uh, you know, but played for... Uh, it's it's a little... It's not, not cynical. It's... um. Satire? It's satirical. And I remember watching it and not catching the the, the fascism mm-hmm. uh, until like a second re-watching it. Well, you know what? Dookie Hauser looks like a fucking Nazi at the end. That's a little, wait a second. Um, yeah, but that's that director for you. Um, Who's the director again? Paul Verhoeven? Mm. Paul Verhoeven, right? Sure, I forget. <laughs> the Robocop and yeah, Paul Verhoeven. Gotcha. And then uh, E.T., e. the, the, the adorable little alien, alien who the... crash lands on Earth, who befriends a, a, a human and their adventure to try and help this little guy get back to his home planet. Yep. Uh... <sighs> okay. I mean, obviously, I think from the get go, it seems like alien lands on Earth. Government says, what the fuck? They see it as a threat. Mm-hmm. And then they send in the troops to stop this cute little adorable thing and the kids got to keep him away but maybe there's a twist he is a horrible little alien and he did come to enslave us and he's just kind of uh, pretending to be nice and cute mm. and maybe he's maybe he's only a baby and he's going to grow and change into something more awful or he's smart enough and has little et powers and can totally take us out but maybe he bonked his head and he kind of forgot you know uh iron giant style uh, okay. <laughs> you know that, that he <laughs> was right. actually like a really bad dude i was just thinking like i feel like i've seen this movie before but it's <laughs> iron giant uh, all right uh yeah i mean i don't like that these are two alien stories yeah. uh because, yeah, I mean, he crash lands, he wants to phone home, he phones home, they come, invade Earth, you know, does he stay an enemy, or does he, like, turn and helps the humans fight the aliens? Yeah. Is he a uh, scout to see how easy we are to attack, or is he, was he a prisoner of a different alien race, and mm-hmm. they... He was able to do a prison escape and his escape pod lands him on earth. And so maybe it's not the government coming after him. It's the, the mm-hmm. space police or whatever they're, they're coming after him. And, and that would be kind of funny that we have this cute, adorable alien that the kid is trying to help. And then the space police are these horrible monstrous, like you take the starship troopers, aliens, you put little cop uniforms on them and stuff with little guns and you go, Oh, they're the bad guys. And I'm like, what? Just because I look like a fucking bug, that little, you know, brown nutsack, that's the bad guy. (laughs) 
Uh, I do like the idea of E.T. being evil, so let's lean into it. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. You know how, like, E.T. can make his neck really long? Yeah. Like, imagine he could do that with his arms and his legs. Like, he's purposely keeping that tucked in so he looks so, like, all not, cute and yeah, small. threatening But then when he needs kind to, like he just... Kind of like an Ewok, but then turns into Chewbacca or something. It, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I like it. Uh, and he doesn't, obviously doesn't have to look like E.T. No, you know? of course, yeah. I know what you mean. An adorable, fuzzy little thing. Furbies and yeah. gremlins and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, let's make this, like, a classic... Well, E.T. was in the 80s. Yeah. So, yeah, let's make this a classic 80s sort of, like... Uh, Gremlin style movie. Okay. Um, but is he better. is he gonna be the only one? Is there a horde of them? Hmm. Are they refugees like District Nine? Or it could be one of those things where um, he doesn't. F- he's from another planet, but he lands and his goal is to duplicate and maybe don't realize it. Because mm-hmm. um, you know the whole movie they're calling him like, oh hey it's. Uh, E.T., he's like this, he's that, or whatever, but mm-hmm. they have no basis to know if it's actually a guy. A guy, they just, yeah. They just assume it is. Yeah. Um, but really, like, what they don't realize is that it's been, maybe, you know, certain neighbors have gone missing lately, and then it's like, oh, maybe this thing has some connection to it. Maybe he can help us find what's taking them. And then he's like, oh, I saw the creature that took them, because maybe at nighttime he, like, you know, gets big and he's kind of like a werewolf kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so he's saying, it's like, oh, we need his help. And, but really his plant, like this whole time he was stealing these neighbors to, you know, plant chest bursters or whatever yeah. to build his alien army. And mm-hmm. these kids are like, oh, we have to stop E.T. Otherwise the earth is doomed because he's going to unleash all these, all these creatures. Um, I feel like I've seen this movie. I think this is somewhere. Critters. I think this is oh, exactly Critters. Critters. Okay. Uh, Fuck. Damn it. Okay. The alien, the alien the well's alien... been pretty tapped dry. That's true. Yeah. Um, but how can we make this new and original? To go back fifty years and write it. <laughs> <sighs> I was gonna say, oh, what if, what if it's a smart alien comes down, is trying to make make peace, but it actually has evil intentions. Well, that's Mars attacks. <sighs> Or it comes down, it's good, but doesn't realize that another evil alien race has put the, you know, chest burster inside the good alien. Mm. And either it overtakes the good one or just explodes out and kills the kid. Oh, God. Ah. Do we just, like, lean into hard R and go more the thing and aliens? Or do we kind of make it cute and friendly? But, you but know, we with have us- our two movies. We have it's Starship Troopers and E.T., you know? Yeah. So what if we go the other way? Take the bugs out of Starship Troopers and make it something a little cuter. I think there's a, you know, and you haven't gotten to it yet, but there's a Solar Opposites episode okay. that's very similar to what I was about to say. So I, I won't ruin that for you. I don't know. This one sucks. Yeah. Is this one? Uh, should we just toss it? Toss it. Not yeah. good enough and do a new one? Sure. Okay. We got we got time. Yeah. And then, you know, if anyone in the comments listens to it, it's like, hey, I got the perfect <laughs> pitch for you. Pitch it up. Pitch it up. Blow our minds. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think this is the first time ever of us saying, fuck this one. Yeah. No, let's scratch it. We always it, try to get something. It's just too similar. We need... Yeah. We, if I, I think it's really at its best when you're crossing genres. I, I, I kind of wish I would have picked my other one first for this. It would have been um, a little weird. All right. All right, so we're scratching it. All right, new one. One, two, three. Let panic me in. room. <laughs> that's funny. That's, let me in, the panic room. Yeah, but that's, that's. I don't think we've done let me in. Hold on. Otherwise known as the remake of... Uh, let the right one in. Let the in. right one in, or the right ones in. Nope, no let me in. Cool. Uh, but I kind of like this, because, you know, let, let me in. Vampire movie about... Uh, a vampire who's been around forever. She has a, a handler who's kind of getting too old, someone that was a kid when she was a kid. Mm-hmm. And now she's kind of looking for her new person and, and plays it off like a friendship, but really her end goal is, I need someone to take care of me. Yeah. And then we have Panic Room, which is Jodie Foster and uh, Kristen Stewart having to hide in a panic room and fend off people breaking into her house. 
I think that's kind of like a fun idea of vampires are trying to get into your place Mm -hmm. and you have a panic room. Can you survive a vampire attack? Now, I think we would have to ignore... Or you go the other way, where it's vampires who are in a panic room oh, from uh, vampire, vampire hunters. Vampire hunters, ooh, yeah. Because yeah. maybe their panic room is also kind of their coffin. Yeah. So that's where they go at night mm-hmm. to get away from any possible sunlight. Yeah, but it's... then these vampire hunters are like, oh, we know vampires live here. Mm-hmm. We need to hunt them down. It's like, oh, we didn't anticipate them to have you know this all these traps all these and, things or whatever yeah because yeah, it, it wouldn't just be some random room it would be down in a basement around a couple of corners so you couldn't like light couldn't shine in off of someone's belt mm-hmm. buckle you know it'd be so secure that there's no way any light would get in oh okay this is kind of kind of fun because if you do it the other way and the vampires are trying to get in, in and the whole point one of the whole things of let me in is you have to ask them to come in. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, one of the, the dumbest vampire rules. Uh, I like how they play it in that movie. You know, the body just starts breaking down. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that works scientifically, but whatever. So you have to kind of ignore that. Yeah, yeah. So if we flip it, and especially if we make it seem like the vampires are awful, really, mm-hmm. really bad people. But what if this was like a sanctuary for specific types maybe it was like children who were bit at a young age Mm -hmm. and they are it's hard for them to kind of blend in with the crowd and it was hard for them to develop not being able to go through puberty and all this stuff and they're kind of they're a special protected class and in the vampire world you don't do that you don't ever bite kids you don't uh bite the the ill or the handicapped because it it, it's um it, it ruins their life so maybe you have some sympathetic vampires and like these kids got bit against their will we need to protect them mm-hmm. but we don't know that through most of the movie we're on the vampire hunter side and we want to get these fucking vampires then it turns out oh no they're just a bunch of kids mm. fuck that sucks and then so now we feel for the vampires. And if you want to do a, another turn and go well they're actually little monster shits and when you bite a kid uh and turn them into a vampire, they are even worse. There's no, you can't reason with them. They're just blood hungry all the time. And maybe they should be put down. But these people, they're sympathetic because right. they understand it. I don't know. You could play with that. That's a pretty good pitch. Mm. Uh, there's also, oh, go ahead. Well, let's go back the other way. Let's put the humans in the panic room okay. and have the vampires. Uh now, maybe in this version, uh, you know, these vampires, they found this house and the people in there just like, you know, maybe we haven't seen the outside world in this version. Okay. And it's like, oh, they found us. Uh, you know, how do they you know, locate us? Whatever, whatever. Uh, they get themselves in the panic room. There's, you know, the stuff in there. They can see they have the cameras and they can see everything. Um, and then the vampires are just like, hey, you know, we need you guys to come out. We... You know, we want you or we want what's inside that vault, but they don't say what, um, you know, is it the cure for a vampire? Is it whatever? Um, and so it's these humans trying to like fight them off. And it's not that, uh, you know, the world has been taken over by vampires. It's just something like the audience, like, oh, maybe that's what's happening. Here. Sure. Is this kind of like, uh, some of the last few humans have found them the secret hiding spot. And the reason they've been able to survive so long is because they've had this panic room, mm-hmm. and, you know, vampires, and they've been able to sniff them out. But like, oh, no, we know you're, there's yeah. a panic room here, and we know you're there. And uh, we just can't get at but you. But we just can't get at you right now. And, you know, maybe these people have jerry rigs and traps in terms of like, oh, well, it's been 24 hours, or it's been enough time, the sun's out, they hit a button, poof, like, all these beams of light come in, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but... The twist of the movie is that, like, there's, I don't know if it's Dracula or one, or a, maybe a, like a, a brood mother or something okay. or whatever. Yeah. There's just like a, a very important vampire in there, uh, who like if they get out will help the vampires either take over the world or will like oh if we kill, this is the vampire that bit us. If we kill it, it kills all the vampires. It, it kills all whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and we can either have the vampire, like, come out and you're just like, oh, fuck, there was a vampire in here. It's going to kill him. It's like, no, no, like, 
I'm on team human side. Mm. Uh, so now it's these vampires who, like, you think they were there to kill these humans, but really they were there to kill this vampire who may or may not be on their side. I haven't okay. figured it out yet. So I remember there's a movie called Dracula 2000, and the, there's a bunch of people who are hired to break into a vault and they think it's a bunch of money, but it's actually where Dracula has been locked away and he can't get out of this vault and he can't affect anyone. So maybe there is some sort of secret underground place that has the first vampire and this vampire is helping them because he's been alive for a thousand years. And, and that rule of if you kill the vampire that turns you into a vampire all the vampires revert back to humans or die sure. or whatever it is. And he, uh, he can't die. He, he's he's tried to kill himself multiple times, but he's too resilient. He's been around for too long that even like sun doesn't put him down. I don't know, whatever it is, but yeah. he wants to help the vampire hunters get into this vault. But I don't know, like, why can't they get into it? And like... Once they have, once they're at the vault, why do they need the vampire anymore? See, I, I was thinking you were going the route of these are the last humans. They're mm. in a, like a cabin in the middle of the woods, and the panic room is just say a basement. But the rules do apply of they cannot get into this place. They can't throw a rock through the window. They can't disrupt the the building without breaking the rule of being let in. Mm -hmm. So how do the vampires try to get in? Do they lure them, you know, like use their psychic powers to try to get someone to open a door? And because they're all crazy hungry, these are the last humans on earth. This is the, the only blood that they'll ever get. And the big thing at the end would be you zoom out of the cabin and it's the whole world of vampires. They're all just like waiting because this is the only blood left on earth. Mm. And these people are just stuck here. They can't do anything because even if they were able to get out with machine guns, it's just seas of vampires filling up the entire forest, just waiting for them. That'd be pretty scary. That would be. Mm. There's a lot of ways you can take this. Yeah, I do. I mean, if we did a, like a final shot outside of the house that showed the whole world is, you know, vampires are off or whatever, that's fine. But, you know, I'm a big fan of these just like one location, yeah. small cast movies. Mm -hmm. I think you could do like a really cool vampire flick, like Hush or something like that. But sure. with vampires, yeah. there might be something there that would be really fun. Yeah. But and like, how do you keep it entertaining? So you would have to have the rule of they have to be let in. But what can they do? Can they break a window with a rock from afar? Can they roll a rock down a mountain to break a wall? Because they're not they're not trying to get in physically, but can they take it all down? Or is the basement protected because there's special runes or it's yeah, in a garlic like what, field, you know? I'm not as much of an expert on vampires as you are. Like, yeah, what would constitute a house? Like yeah. is it then, any doorway? And then so it's like, let's say you have the house and then one wall falls out yeah. so now it's just a three-walled house like it's still that... i am i'm home i am here yeah. i didn't invite you in it doesn't negate the fact that this is still a house yeah but now it like just doesn't feel like the same thing yeah i'm not sure what the rules are there because if i ran into an outhouse and go oh, i live here now or they go ah shit they, they said it was his that house would work i think it has to there has to be something about like the aura of, of of a home you know, this with is, yeah this is where I raised a family I here, here. I don't shit here yeah <laughs> I mean I can do both I uh -huh. guess but uh but yeah like if you're a homeless guy and you live in a tent does that tent now become yeah I I feel like that would apply mm -hmm. um and and it could be even scary just to do a group of people in a cabin and there is only like one vampire you make it mm -hmm. like a Jason Voorhees person who's been in the woods maybe they've been slumbering this whole time. They they left the, the human world because they couldn't stand uh, killing humans. Mm -hmm. So they went out into the woods, into the middle of nowhere, and they're eating squirrels and bears and deer, and they're just living off that. But because it's not human blood, they're de-evolving, and they're mm -hmm. becoming more Nosferatu-like. You know, I, like I'm imagining super, super skinny, but like you can still see the watch is on his wrist still, okay. but it's just dangling. Maybe he's still wearing his suit, and but like the, you know... It's falling off of him. Uh, and 
has been living a perfectly good life, sleeping throughout most of it, hibernating, waking up, taking out a bear, going back to sleep. But then when these humans come to a cabin that's been abandoned for decades, not like they had to hike 10 days, there's no roads here at all, he can't help himself. Mm -hmm. And now one of them hurt themselves, tripped on a rock, skinned their knee, he's smelling that human blood, he's going nuts. And now he's trying to get at these people, completely bloodlust, and they, maybe this house is special for some reason, or it's just a cabin that has a basement, and you could call that the panic room or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's just him luring them out one by one. And I, I would love to see, after he gets a taste of the first one, like maybe he's getting more and more crazed, but he's coming more and more human again. So he becomes smarter and even more. He's smarter. Maybe he's getting, getting more the, powers. He's getting his hair back. He's filling out the outfit. He's lo He doesn't look like a monster anymore. Mm. And then by the time it gets to the end, looks like a normal dude. Maybe disheveled, for sure. But uh, I mean, I imagine he would kill, like one of the people would have to go outside for something like, I'll get to the car. Uh -huh. and, and then he gets murdered. And then he just takes his clothes. And so now sure, yeah, yeah. Cool. And then looks better. And then pretending, oh, hey, I'm just a guy camping out in the woods, too. And I'm hurt. And like, mm, really? You're out here, too? It took us 10 days to hike out here. And you're just showing up. And like, yeah, I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> I'd watch that. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool, yeah. actually. Okay, so what do we call this movie? Call, call any of them, really. Yeah. Uh, um, besides Let Me In The Panic Room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't call it that. Uh, First thing that came to mind was just, like, Beyond Thirst. It's like, you know, when you're just so hungry, so thirsty, you're, you're mad. You'll do anything just to satiate whatever you need. You're so hungry, you're willing to kill your family members to eat because you've gone beyond hunger. Now, now you've gone into madness. Oh, yeah, you're cooped up. It's the chicken coop. You know, you're just a bunch of people mm. and you have all these, the hungry wolves outside just, or the foxes waiting for the unquenchable. Uh, this movie should be called trap. Not that. Josh Hart <laughs> movie. Uh, or knock at the cabin door, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock at the cabin. Yeah. Uh, knock, knocks taken. Mm-hmm. God, my favorite vampire title is like Vampire on a Boat, and it was called Blood Vessel. It's oh, just, fuck, that's is, good. I'm like, I saw that. I'm like, this is a Steve movie. He he <laughs> said that God word, and that movie it. came into into being. That's fantastic, isn't it? Oh, that's that's good. Fuck the last voyage to meet her. <laughs> I mean, if they were like locked in, uh, like a blood bank, you call it yeah, a blood bank. Blood bank. Yeah, I was yeah. just thinking that. But it's not. Oh, we're a couple of doctors, and we have to fend off vampires <laughs> from stealing all of our patients' blood. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I mean, that's a movie too. That's, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's that's the B movie. We're going for yeah. you know something low low, low budget, but yeah. like could play in a theater I, I, I i'm thinking like 30 days of night sort of scary yeah, just yeah, yeah. like impending doom yeah that's that's what i was thinking too uh even though you don't really like that movie right no i love that movie oh, okay yeah who's the one who doesn't like it i don't know i feel like someone has I talked to recently the thing I don't like, like that it. movie's not that good it's like but it is no though. it's great i think yeah. it's on my list of best vampire movies you know yeah. we did an episode of that um i just don't like how like like day three in an attic and then Day 28, and they're still in that attic. I'm like, no, you're not. They would have found mm -hmm. you by now. You, Someone would have farted too loud. You're not lasting that long. Um, Like, if we were doing a cabin, maybe they were just like, at a campground. You know, like, camp blood. But that's such like, yeah, a, like, that's Tales, a from the Kip, uh, Tales from the Crypt thing or yeah, something. Yeah, that's goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, God. Titles are hard sometimes. Uh, let's go beyond thirst for right now. Okay, all right. We got nothing better. I think that one's specifically kind of for the the singular vampire who's been in the woods. But okay, well, since we scrapped that other one, you want to do one more? Yeah, of course. Okay, we gotta all get right. three good ones. Okay, or three solid ones. Three at least. solid ones. Okay, I'm going back to my my other one, and even that would have worked with this. God, why did I? All right. All right, hang on. Sorry. My... If, 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 if it's going to help you, I know we normally don't do this, but mine's like drama, period piece, 
Oh, okay. And it's a downer. Okay. So if that helps you, if you want to pick half baked or something like that, you know, or dodgeball. I know we did dodgeball in our first episode, but you know, that's where mine is going for this next one. Garfield, a tale of two kitties. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on. Okay, it's a comedy I've seen, so I'll <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. I'm not sure how much I like it, but let's try. Uh, so this may end up being an awful, awful idea. We'll see. We'll go. One, two, three. The Schindler's interview. list. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> God damn it. The interview and Schindler's List. Well, let me interview Hitler. Because that's what it would be. That's, that's actually like perfect. Yeah. Uh, in a sense. Like. Because the interview is a story of uh, a talk show host who goes to North Korea to talk to mm -hmm. uh, Kim Jong Il or Un. I forget what the movie's, which one it was in the movie. Kim Jong Un. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. And they form uh, a friendship. Yeah. Um, where like. I think that would actually be like a really fucking good like Oscar bait movie. Uh -huh. if, like, oh, I'm an American journalist who wants to report on the war. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get let me Hitler get Hitler's side. Hitler side, which goes, may have happened. There, there could a hundred percent like the Frost Nixon version, but with Hitler. Yeah, Frost Nixon is a great example, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> uh, even though I never saw Frost Nixon, it's I, it's a good movie. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, you have this American journalist who the uh, American government's just like, hey, we want you to interview Hitler. And while you're there, we want you to try and kill him. Mm -hmm. Kind of Valkyrie yeah. meets... Uh, so so we're not, <laughs> now we're doing Valkyrie meets... But uh, <laughs> even, if, even if we don't do, like, the interviewer is trying to kill him, just having the interview, like, in this super tense situation, I'm going into... We're in the middle of World War II, where I'm going to the most dangerous place on the planet mm -hmm. to meet the most dangerous man on the planet uh to interview him just like will he force me to write a good story or can i like write my own stuff yeah will is they, he gonna even let me go are, am i gonna get killed on the way there and you just have mm -hmm. this really intense how has this movie not been made yet yeah i like, mean if we're obviously not history guys no. this could have actually happened and maybe there is a movie for it but we're going on the assumption that this did not happen yeah so we'll, this we'll Tarantino is, it in the sense like, fictional. oh yeah, uh, the bla the bastards machine gun their space at the, <laughs> yeah. the theater. This is our version, but not as ridiculous. Yeah. So knowing that it's fictional, we can do whatever we want. We could have Ava Braun see this uh, interviewer and be like, ooh la la. Yeah, there's and they a love sleep affair. Sleep together. Aspect. Yeah, yeah. And now, not only is this the leader of the Nazi party, but I'm also fucking his girl. Gulp. <laughs> <laughs> or did you ever see uh, the last King of Scotland? Yes. Yeah. One, that movie's awesome. Yes. Two, uh, but it could be something like that where it's just, I like it. Cause that it's kind of the same thing, but just, uh, in what country was that? Uganda. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, so you have, cause I don't know if, uh, James McAvoy in that movie wasn't a journalist. He was just kind of like a tourist. Was it James McAvoy? Yeah. Oh. It was like before he got like... Doesn't he have stuff. like red hair in that? Because I remember they, they... Nah, I mean, maybe it was like lighter brown, but... Because doesn't Forrest Whitaker make a huge joke of like, oh, redhead people are considered really ugly in this country and you're kind of ugly and disgusting. That's like the only thing I remember uh, from that movie. I mean, movie. it's been a while since I've seen okay. it. Okay. Uh, but I mean, I know he was obsessed with like Scottish culture yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you just have this person who, you know, isn't like knows immediately, like I've heard nothing but horrible stories about this person, whether it be Idi Amin or mm -hmm. Hitler. Let me go over there and find out for myself. Maybe there are in the movie, you kind of do see why Hitler might be kind of charming or endearing or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know shit about Hitler, so I'm not <laughs> saying he is. Relax. Yeah. But maybe... <laughs> I'm not apologizing for him. But maybe you go over there and kind of, like, humanize him a little bit, but then as he's, like, hanging out with him, it's like, oh, yeah, excuse me for a second. And then you just hear, like, machine gun fire sure, in the distance. Sure. It's like, okay, no, like, there's some fucked up stuff going yeah. on. And it's like, oh, hey, come to dinner with me. And he looks outside, and there's people hanging i don't know what the fuck you could do yeah you could but. look at very historically accurate moments of him speaking to people and you put our journalist character he's there yeah. forrest gump style uh -huh. um it's like he's always off off camera and like hold on i have a speech to make and he goes out 
does one of his classic speeches and we see it from a different perspective. I know Hitler never learned English, but in this universe, he did. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But we're also forgetting this is our uh, this meets that where it doesn't have to be Hitler. It can be a fictional character. It could be something in medieval times or on a faraway planet. We just have to have the the guts of what Schindler's List, Schindler's in, the List is. in the interview is. Yeah, so it could, it could be... All right, will you pitch me a different movie? Because I I really like this movie. Yeah. I could see this playing. Yeah. Like, this is going for Oscar gold right here. <laughs> for sure. We don't get a lot of Oscar movie no, pitches no. in this thing. This is it. Uh, but, like, I don't know... Because we're forgetting a little bit about Schindler's List that it's more than just Hitler. It's about sure. Oscar Schindler. That's true. Who is trying to get people out of these situations. Okay. Yeah. You're so, right. You're right. So we do have, say, say we set this in the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we have someone in, in another country. They're doing horrible, awful, fucked up stuff. And so we do send purposefully America's greatest superstar talent Maybe they're a sports star mm-hmm. and an actor. They've rapped as well. They're just like they're they're <laughs> they're super popular. Okay. And like Kim Jong Il or Un, one of the Kim Jongs, uh, loved Dennis Rodman, mm. and he went there and played basketball and like so they know we got to get rid of this bad guy. Let's send, you know, our our biggest star, and so. They they form this thing, and in the process of him going there, he meets a Oscar Schindler type, mm-hmm. and he realizes, I I I can't, you know, I can't turn a blind eye anymore. Sure. I have to help this person. Um, but I don't I don't. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could. You could still do the journalist thing who goes and meets Hitler uh, and it's just like, oh, wow, what a great interview that maybe it's like right before the war. The war like just kind of started. America hasn't gotten involved yet. Mm -hmm. Um, So he hasn't seen like the world doesn't know exactly all the once again, this may not be historically accurate. I don't know when everyone kind of found out about everything, but I imagine it took a while. and, you know, it, it all seems to go well. You notice some things might be kind of off, but it just seems like, ah, uh, it, it, there's some turmoil, but maybe it's not that big a deal. And he's going to go back. Then he meets the Oscar Schindler guy who's just like, hey, I've been getting people out. I need to get more people. I have an inside. And he's like, oh, there's a story here, too. Mm-hmm. And then he follows this guy around and it's like, yeah, I've been helping Jewish people escape by pretending to be a part of the Nazi party. Yeah, I'm and Hitler's then, right-hand man. Or... And then maybe he's like, okay, well, if you want to like roll with me and tell my story, that's fine, but you're going to need to like pretend to be like part of this group or like yeah. I'm going to say you're my cousin or we're going to mm-hmm. recruit you or whatever it is. Um, yeah, and then maybe the the Hitler character finds out. He's mm-hmm. been backstabbed by his, his best guy, kills Oscar Schindler's, uh, and then now our interviewer he's now what do i do do i go home do i pick up his list and help Mm -hmm. and 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 take over his cause yeah i imagine it it's like oh well i help these people escape from this last like the climax of the movie and then it's him like oh i need to get to the airport and so that's super scary because i need to go back and like report my story Mm -hmm. i mean you can probably telegraph i don't know (laughs) telegraphs were a thing back then right yeah and phones uh but either way i think that could be really cool too. Be like the end of Argo when they're like racing to the, was yeah. that the, yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, airport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the end of the Tetris movie. Man, man, you're, <laughs> you're pulling out some D cuts. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it, man. Like, oh, yeah, that, that is some good stuff yeah. right there. See, I'm, and I'm just picturing uh, Dennis Rodman talking to Hitler. And mm-hmm. it's like so anachronistic. That's why I think if, if you were going to do this, Unless you know 100% that this actually happened with Hitler, you got to tell a fake person. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. At- atrocity in this Russia just like or... A, you know, uh, my wife reads a lot of, like, period piece, mm-hmm. uh, like World War II, uh, falling in love or whatever sure. during that time. It's yeah. like, well, you could you just make stories up all the time yeah. set in that world. You can do that here. Uh, I don't know 
I, I don't know if they'd want that or if they were like, oh no, we do World War Two movies that happen. Mm-hmm. You know the whatever, but yeah, I don't know what's more interesting, like making up a story and creating this fake righteous hero, like oh look how good this person did in the background of what Hitler was doing, and oh what yeah. an amazing, I don't know, but the, he didn't exist. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like unless you do something crazy like Tarantino. I can only think of World War II movies that like actually happened. Yeah. Valkyrie, Schindler's List, mm-hmm. uh, The Pianist. Mm-hmm. Like, Life is Beautiful. Life is know, Beautiful. All, I, all that. Yeah. The Boy like, in the Striped Pajamas. Let's just name World War II movies. <laughs> <laughs> but I just mean like, I, well, was Life is Beautiful and uh, The Boy in the Striped like Concentration camps, Jews. No, I know, but oh. I, I'm saying, are those true stories? Oh, 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 oh. That's what I was saying. I couldn't think. But no, Ooh, that I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I, we can pull this off. It's fine. Sure, yeah, yeah. I guess you could just make up whatever. Now, okay, so if we if we're using Hitler, is it actually going to be the interview is the interviewer blah, the interviewer is helping Schindler, or is it his own mission? Is he just helping another fake guy doing something similar? Like this guy's like, oh, I I was buddies with Oscar Schindler and I really liked his, what he was doing. Well, no, I like the idea where, you know, he comes over and it's just like, oh no, this is cool or not cool, but like. <laughs> It's, uh, I don't see, maybe it's not as bad as people say, but then he meets Oscar Schindler, who could be a celebrity in his own right Mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm kind of known in um, America or New York or whatever. You're known Mm -hmm. in Germany. It would make sense for us to hang out. Yeah. Kind of photo ops and yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe it doesn't even have to necessarily be, uh, a professional like journalist or interviewer. Maybe it's just like, oh, I'm a celebrity who's doing like a, thing for vanity fair like they kind of do i don't know if they do that kind of shit back then that they do now but it's just like oh i'm kind of over here to like take pictures mingle a little bit or maybe he was like oh i'm doing a movie premiere over here he meets hitler whatever whatever then meets schindler and it's just like no dude check this shit out and it's like (laughs) well you know what this is fucked up i'm gonna stay over here and i'm gonna like maybe hire maybe oh maybe do like a movie set kind of thing it's like oh i want to shoot a movie here let me pull some oh we need some really downtrodden people to Mm -hmm. play uh, homeless people or whatever and then it's like but it's really like a movie set and then you do a fucking Argo and then you thing. do an Argo yeah <laughs> where you uh, <laughs> god damn it uh, but he's like instead of doing Schindler's uh, metal factory or whatever it was you do a movie set and then he's helping um, Jewish people escape that yeah. way somehow yeah. and it, if you're not doing an interviewer and you're doing a celebrity there was the Olympics happened during mm-hmm. yep. World War Two, and uh, we could, you know, work something, in something, there. something is there, you know, like, oh, I don't like these black people, but I see that they're winning gold medals. Let me let me try to extend an olive branch. But um, no, OK, that kind of makes Hitler sound like a nice guy. Yeah, I don't know. There, but there's he can be a multi-layered character. <laughs> no, no, Hitler is not allowed <laughs> to be multi-layered. <laughs> just pure evil <laughs> uh, so yeah i mean there's there's a story here so yeah. because we are not the history buffs that should be right we'd have to this, work it out we'd have to do some research but, th- but i think this, this is, is the fun. general yeah. idea okay yeah. I, I think don't... i think there is a potential oscar film here unlike right. our usual like Shock, sci-fi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, our, our usual trash with stupid titles okay so what would we call this uh my dinner with the fuhrer <laughs> Uh, Hitler in expose. You know, it, it's got to have a a stupid interviewee type title, like a newspaper headline. Mm-hmm. Lights, camera, Achtung! <laughs> I was thinking lights, camera, action. How do I make a stupid joke out of this? I don't uh, even know what Achtung means no. in German. I've got twenty three. Ah, twenty four. Lord of the Rings. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's lodged in a cerebral cortex. <laughs> I hate that line. Do you yeah. know what the fucking I'm cerebral so glad. cortex is? That's the only is? part. I'm, I'm glad they cut that stuff. Let's call this uh, Mad Max Fuhrer Road. <laughs> it's like, it'd be something like In the Shadows of Hitler, you know? Uh, I was trying to think of something like read all about it if we're doing like a oh, I was doing like an expose where he was a writer or mm. a new, worked for a newspaper but that's not a thing uh a star of david is born 
What about like, I was gonna say like taking action, like an acting thing, like you mm-hmm. say action, mm-hmm. or do we just do, do we just call it action? But no, that makes it sound like an action yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're taking action on the awful events, but also like if you're leaning into like sort of the, sort of the more movie aspect of it. Uh, but I don't necessarily. Know. This is hard. Yeah. It would just have one of those like dumb generic titles yeah. of like I get your Oscar bait movie just to pull people in. Yeah. Like uh, the, my interview with Adolf is it'd be something really boring like that. No, that's even that sounds. I mean something more like Hope Springs. You know? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh. Yeah. Let's say he's an actor. Do you just want to call it the actor, like the reader. Oh, but this, I mean, I never saw the reader, no. but just, it has a title like that. You just yeah. call it the actor. And I'm like, what's that about? Oh, it's an actor who like met Hitler, betrayed him, made friends with this guy who helped but it would, people escape. Wouldn't it be like the actor and the dictator? Let's go with that. Okay. 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 The actor and the dictator. I like that. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Do we have a tagline for this one? <laughs> Lights, camera, actun. Uh... And like, you know, he went for press, he, but he came back impressed. I don't know. You know, you know, one of those dumb things. Like, uh, he went to promote his latest film, and he came back with seven thousand lives. You know, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> where, where that, how that would work, uh, really, but absolute uh, shit. Oh, <laughs> all, right. all right, I think this has gone long. This is like our longest episode of This Meets That. We normally keep these really tight. But... Sometimes they just flow from us. Sometimes yeah. we really have to workshop them. But I, I think hard drive is totally functionable. Uh-huh. There's a lot you could do. Silly comedy, something a little darker. Uh, Beyond thirst. You could take it both both ways of either vampires versus the humans or the humans versus vampires. I know that sounded stupid. It's pretty much the know, same thing, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then the actor and the dictator. So we have a possibly sci-fi comedy, mm-hmm. uh, small, like kind of more indie vampire flick, mm-hmm. and an Oscar bait uh, World War II movie. Yeah. I think we, we – look at us. Look at it, yeah. We're diversifying the portfolio awesome. here. Okay, cool. Uh now, if you have any movies, two random ass movies, and you want us to mash them up and try to, to make something, hit us up at wrplpodcast at gmail.com. We'll do an episode specifically with that. Just give uh, us ideas. <laughs> and if you do, put your description in it. I won't read it. I'll just look at the two movies, then, you know, enter down, yeah. and then and add it a, l- a little bit further down so I don't see it. And then we'll read it off, off air. Or on, I'm sorry, we'll read it on air and see how close we are to what you say. So that's wrplpodcast at gmail.com, or you could hit us up on Twitter, on threads, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, as always, I'm Ben. And I'm Steve. Ooh, I don't know. We haven't done this in a while. Do I have a little thing I say at the end? Uh...